Whoa, now, 48 max is a lot, and we should not play around with such. That's a lot in your test for exam 450. Welcome to genetics and inheritance. We all know genetics as, genetics as the study of, not inheritance, heredity. Well, inheritance is included in there, but it's ne that's neither here nor there. So, what, what are we going to be looking at in this chapter? We're going to be looking at how uh, genes are passed on, or traits, genes or traits, whatever you want to, however you want to look at, are passed on from the parents, which is your mother and father, onto their offspring, that is you. And then how you and your partner in the near future are going to pass on these, very, these not very same genes, because there's recombination of genes during... Uh, prophase uh, one of meiosis, but how are you going to pass on certain genes that you've inherited from your from your parents onto your offspring as well? So this is genetics, and then for you to basically know this chapter very well, you have to brush up on your nucleic acids. Basically, know the structure of your chromosome. Again, it will help you a little bit, or not a little bit, a lot. Then, then go brush up on your meiosis just a little bit. Touch on meiosis, yes. But if you don't know uh, those topics, please visit some of my videos uh, that are based on those two topics. All right, let's get into it. Now, when I teach this, I first want to start with terminology. Terminology is the bane of our life. Like, it destroys us, absolutely demolishes us uh, in our papers. So, we must know terminology and we must, we must know it very, very well. Okay? Good. First and foremost, I want to start with this. Uh, my... my there's method to my madness. It, it will make sense as to why I'm starting with the structure of the chromosome. Remember, your chromosomes exist in pairs. Né? They exist in pairs. Uh, the one chromosome is from your father, and the other one is from your mother, for example. Né? And then chromosomes have central mass, and these are replicated chromosomes, which have what we call chromatids. Are we together? So, in genetics, what are we going to be looking at? We're going to be looking at your genes. So, that's the first term that I want, want you to get. So, what is this gene? So, your chromosome has got specific locations, a specific spots. Né? That specific location where you can find a specific gene is known, for example, there's many of them, is known as a locus. Okay? Not a locus, it is... Um, good people of God, no. Ah. Sometimes we see this in tests. Why are you writing locusts? We're not talking about arthropods here. What are insects doing here? Eh? We are talking about genetics, genes here. Eh? It is a locus. Locus, for me, when I think locus, I think location. Location of what? Of a certain gene. So, that is a locus. Ne? Low cas, 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 cas. Please, there's no T in there. Ne? Mm -hmm. but there's no T. Right. So, what is a gene? A gene is a particular section of your DNA. Ne? Or, or a particular section on your chromosome that basically codes for a particular trait. Ne? Segment of, uh, of DNA in a chromosome that contains a code for a particular characteristic. For example, in your family, uh, if you come from, uh, for, you are from the Chalka family. In the Chalka family, you've been having this big flat nose. Uh, it, it is a characteristic, a defining dominant characteristic in your family. Eh? Yeah. That big, uh, that big uh, flat nose is coded for by a particular gene. Yeah. So that is a gene. Uh, whether you are coding for a particular a trait in your family, like height, for example, you are tall or you are all short. That is a that, that is going to be coded for by certain gene that is on a segment. It's a segment basically of DNA that codes for that. Yeah. All right, perfect. Now, now we we now we understand what a gene is. Okay, that, that that is all well and good. But remember, your chromosomes exist as homologous chromosomes, meaning one from the mother, one from the father. If at a certain locus, for example, that this locus, we are coding for eye color. Eye color. 
So this gene is for alkyne here on this particular logo. Since these two homologous chromosomes are the same, remember these these they code for the same thing at the at, at the same locus, right? the same gene at the same locus. So that means that the other one, let's say the purple one is from your father and the green one is from your mother, this one will also code for eye color. But what is what what is important here? What is important here is that well, for example, this eye color, let's say this is from your father, uh, and then this is from the father, and this is from the mother. Your, your mother there, uh, Sophie. How do you write Sophie? Uh, Sophie, yeah, I don't know, Sophie. Or oh, your mother's Dipur there. Dipur has got brown eye color. Ne? Dipur has got brown eye color. And then the father is Bas John there. Uh, who Bas John? Dipur uh, uh, likes them a bit lighter, so he went for Bas John, who is a blue eye color. Now, notice that both of them have the gene for eye color. Both of them have got genes for eye color. What is the difference here? The type of eye color. Now, Dipur here has got the brown eye color, but John has got the blue eye color. These two variations, these two different forms of this of, of this gene, what gene? The eye color gene are known as alleles. Hmm? That's a nice. So what are alleles? Alleles are alternative forms of a gene. I have a, we have eye color, ne? a blue eye color from Bas John. Now, an alternative form of that is the brown eye color from Dibu. So that means these two are alleles. And alleles always exist in pairs because we always have two alleles for uh, that, that are called for, for a trait. Now, just that they're going to be different. So an allele is different forms of a gene which occur at the same locus, not locus D, locus, okay, on homologous chromosomes. Remember, it must be on homologous chromosomes. These are alternative forms of a G. All together. Ah, this is easy now. Now, to give you to give you an, an example. On these two, remember these two are still homologous. These are homologous chromosomes. Okay? And then on these two homologous chromosomes, you find that we have different or oh, the Plural for locus is loci. We have multiple loci over here. Yeah? One, two, three, four loci to be exact. Where we looked at different traits. So both of them have, on, let's say this is loci one, loci, uh, lo locus one, locus two, locus three, and locus four. On locus one, the genes that we have on locus one are for icon. That is the G that particular section of the DNA on, the, on your chromosome. It codes for hair color. Ne? But the poor's hair color is black. But John's hair color is blonde. So that means we have a pair of alleles, alternative forms of the hair color G. Let's go to uh, uh, locus 2. Ne? Then locus 2 we find blood type. The first blood type is A, ne? A plus, for example, and then Bas John's uh, blood type is B plus. How? And then these are alternatives. The first got A plus, Bas John has got B plus. Those alternatives are known as the alleles. Ne? Are you seeing the trend? They exist in pairs. Now, skin color, the same at locus 3. Ne? Locus 3, it's skin color. Obviously, the poor skin color is black, brown, or however you want to put it. And then, Bas John's skin color is white. Ne? Ne? At locus 3, we have, they, they both have genes for skin color. They're coding for skin color, but the alleles are different. Ne? One is black, one is white. Similar to eye color. Ne? Mm -hmm. Bas John, I should. Uh, but here's Bas John with uh, at a certain locus codes for 
blue eye color and it works for brown eye color. Yeah? Good. And now, another thing, since we know that no, these ones are ex or do exist as pairs, yeah? they exist as pairs. So, what are we gonna what are we gonna do now? We're gonna look at how they are represented. Alleles are represented using letters. For a certain trait, yeah, like hair color, we will choose a letter yeah, to represent that hair color. Let's say, for example, we choose the letter, I don't know, hair color B. We choose the letter B. This is the letter that is chosen for the trait for hair color. However, we have two types of hair color, brown and uh, 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 no, black and blonde hair color. So, and I'm using that B not because they start uh, brown and black start with B. Ne? I can use any letter. For example, let's use, okay, but let's continue using B. Ne? So, I will say, okay, the brown, uh, no, not the brown, the black hair color will be represented by the capital letter B. And then the uh, this is for black hair color. And then the blonde will be represented by a small letter B. So that's the blonde. And why do we have varying uh, cases of, of letters, uppercase and lowercase? The uppercase letter means that it is that allele is dominant. We'll explain thoroughly what dominant means. And the other one is re recessive what does recessive mean dominant means it will be shown physically so if they have a child together the child will have black hair and but they will still have the gene uh, the, the, the allele for a blonde hair just that it is recessive meaning it will not show ne? good so the uh, basically we write it like that these these will be the genotypes that will be inside the the, the, the genotype that will uh, that will be inside the Child. So basically, that's how we represent your uh, your alleles. But we'll get we'll, we'll do some more later on. All right. So what is a genotype and a phenotype? Now the genotype is what we've been talking about. It's a combination of those two alleles. Ne? It, it, it can, they can be any combination. Ne? We'll get to do it now. Homozygous or heterozygous. But a combination of those alleles is called the genotype. Obviously, we can't see the genotype. Of a person, you can't look at the genotype and say, but when I uh, inside uh, you have a, a, an allele for brown uh, black hair and allele for blonde hair, you can't see that. So, but the only thing you can see is the one that is, uh, is the allele that is expressed. For example, if the person has black hair, you're gonna say this is your phenotype. It is a base. It's basically an organism's physical appearance based on the genotype. For example, the genotype in, in, in the previous case, they both had a child uh, with black hair. Ne? Black because black hair was dominant and blonde hair was recessive. This is their genotype. However, the physical appearance, the phenotype will be black hair color. That is the phenotype. All right, which brings us to the next. Uh, a set of uh, phrases that we must we must know or oh, not phrases but terminology now, now homozygous and heterozygous be very 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 careful not to confuse the two homozygous and homologous remember we just at the beginning we said there some chromosomes are homologous homo meaning the same yeah? homologous chromosomes these are a set of Chromosomes that are identical in size, the same uh, the same genes on the same locus, so forth and so forth. These are homologous with, uh, chromosomes. Homozygous has to do with alleles, those alternative forms of genes. Yeah? These are basically when you say something is heterozygous, so an individual is heterozygous, has heterozygous and these alleles, so that person has inherited alleles that are similar. Yeah. Two of those alleles are similar from their parents for a particular gene. For example, 
if for this person is tall, is, and then they inherited the tall allele from their father and another tall allele from their mother, and both of them are dominant. So we say that they are homozygous dominant. So both because they are the same, they are homo homozygous. And because of the, remember we represent a dominant allele with a capital letter, yeah, a capital letter or uppercase letter. So these are homozygous and they are dominant. So this is homozygous dominant ne? Uh, alleles. Ne? This, this, uh, this genotype is called homozygous dominant. So what if the person has got two alleles for, the, uh, uh, for shortness or for the height, for a lower height, which is being short? So both of them are recessive, but both of them are the same. They could put the same thing that is a short person. Basically, they are still homo, I mean the same, zygous. But both of them are recessive, meaning not all of them, uh, meaning that if there was another dominant one, they wouldn't be shown physically, phenotypically. So these are homozygous recessive. Ne? Then heterozygous. Ne? No, hetero meaning different. This is a person who inherits two different ideas from their parents, meaning you inherit a dominant characteristic and a recessive characteristic. Ne? Then the tall allele and the short allele are written as capital letter T and small letter T. So this person, this person is heterozygous. But what would be the phenotype? The phenotype of this person I mean. This person will be tall, yeah? but he is heterozygous, tall. Yeah? Good. So basically, they are showing, yeah, sometimes we represent them like this. this. This basically just shows you the difference between homologous and homozygous. It all sounds the same, but it's not. Almost, and you know, Tamiya saying almost doesn't count. Right, then let's finish off with dominant and recessive alleles. Dominant alleles, I like the word expressed, they are expressed phenotypically. Yeah? Whether they are found in an individual with the heterozygous genotype or homozygous genotype, because there is the dominant allele T for dominant, that means this person will be, either way, they will be tall. So the tall, the tall allele is dominant. So it will be expressed. It doesn't matter what it's paired with for now. Yeah? Good. And the recessive allele is an allele that is not expressed phenotypically if it is in a heterozygote. The only way it can be expressed if is if it was in a heter in a homozygous condition. Yeah? Meaning there are two alleles for shortness then it can be expressed then the, this patient shema as you see they're gonna be top they're gonna be short i usually we don't say short man i i, I think it's, it's, it's yeah it's the human so let's just say uh, people are vertically challenged <laughs> is it vertical or horizontal eh? yeah it's vertical yes then if this person is heterozygous the short allele will not be, basically it will be masked in a way. It will not show physically. Yeah? Although this person will be tall. Good. Alright, so just to recap, let's do the, let's do the following questions quick, quick. Yeah, just to show if, if we understand. What is, if, we're, if you were doing this uh, in a test, an alternative form of a gene, what would you say it is? What is your answer going to be? Hallelujah, um, alternative forms of a gene, it is an allele. Having two identical alleles for a given gene. You have two identical alleles for a given gene. What is that? Meaning they can be like this or they can be like this. Two identical alleles. What do you call that? Wait, think about it. They are identical. The same meaning homozygous, not homologous, zygous. A unit of hereditary information with a specific sequence in, it, in DNA is called a gene. 
having two different alleles for a given gene they say for example this what do we call this different operative word in different different hetero then it's going to be heterozygous ignore e it's not on you it's not for you the genetic makeup or set of alleles of an organism the genetic that is the genotype alleles phenotypic effect is not observed in the heterozygote meaning if you have tall short genotype this alleles phenotypic effect will not be observed so that means it will be recessive an allele's phenotypic effect is fully expressed in a in a oh, not in a heterozygote which means it's this one it is dominant so yeah this is this is some of them and then if you want you can uh, basically do these uh, these questions that will basically help you understand the topic